Hey, security peeps, we're live with another edition of Breaking Into Cybersecurity. Today is Mondays with Dr. Dan. I am Renee Small, cybersecurity super recruiter, helping awesome leaders hire great talent. Say hi to everybody, Dan. Hi, Dr. Dan Schaefer, company Peak Performance Strategies. And what we do is to help people get a competitive edge very, very quickly and separate themselves in their competition very, very quickly, which makes That's a big difference in today's marketplace. That is absolutely true, Dan. Thank you for that. Dan has been here with us for almost a whole year. Um, and Dan, the reason why we have this getting ready to welcome in 26, and that's not a typo, um, Dan always talks about taking his clients five years out and looking backwards. So right now, all of Dan's clients are in 2026. So Dan, I want you to jump in, talk about your philosophy around this. I mean, it's been an amazing experience for me to experience over the years, being five years, always five years out. Um, so would love to have you share that. Welcome, getting ready to welcome in 2026 for this Monday. Of course, next week we're gonna be doing 2026, but today's getting ready for it. Yep. Uh, I want to just start quickly by talking about the difference between your conscious and your subconscious mind. Your conscious, conscious mind is what you use every day. Look, listen, learn, analyze, synthesize, accept, reject. Uh, your subconscious mind is different, though. Uh, it does a bunch of things, but what it m must do is it must act out in a thought, image, or idea that you put into it. Uh, and it will do that relentlessly. Part of my business is helping people get out of the way to, to empower their subconscious mind to do what they need to do. S may sound a little airy-fairy, may sound a little off the wall. However, people who do this will not talk about it. People who uh, visualize out into the future. Uh, this is not goal setting. Don't mistake this for goal setting. This is dreaming. So what I'm going to suggest that you do, and I'll give you some ideas and some examples of people who've done this, is spend the next week imagining for just a moment that you're not in 2021, approaching 2021, but you're in 2026. So what does that look like? What do you want to have happen? What do you want your 2026 to look like? You're five years older. Your, your family's five years older. Uh, you know, your, your kids are five years older, go, go, you know, getting ready to go to school or whatever. But the, the way this works is, is that the, the best part about this is when you can utilize your subconscious, well, which acts on your behalf without any effort on your part, once you get the target into your subconscious mind, so you'll imagine, for example, um, I'm dealing with a, a woman later on today who's going to be in dental school. I said, you imagine yourself graduating from dental school. What does that look like? Where are you doing? And then, but where this plays in, both for you personally and if you're trying to develop your business or you're trying to expand your business or persuade or influence somebody to make some change that you want, uh, it's a lot easier to close somebody on a business deal in 2026 than it is in 2021. Why is that? You have an invisible dynamic that's working on your behalf every single day. That's invisible. Nobody sees it. And it's called short-term discomfort versus long-term regret. Very simply, uh, whatever we're proposing now that you do, you think about is maybe uncomfortable, but I'll tell you what you really, really don't want. You don't want to be in 2026 looking back and saying, boy, I wish I did that. I wish I made this phone call. I wish I connected with that person. I wish I worked on myself. I wish I, I did something differently. So it's that dynamic that gets somebody to think about what you want to be doing. So uh, you imagine for a moment that you're in 2026 and what does that look like? Now, I know we did that with uh, when I worked with Euler Packet executives who were in the middle of it, merged with Compact, that was some years ago. And they would go out to a, uh, a, a client on a senior level. This is uh, 
a guy who like ran the Czech Republic would go out to speak to one of the biggest box store people or whoever they supply. And he would say, listen, tell me what five years out from now looks like. And the initial response is, wait a minute, I can't set goals for two for a year. Why do you want me to set goals for 2025, 2026? Well, the reason is, is that it puts it into your subconscious mind. It works on it all the time. What we do, and Renee mentioned it with my clients, is I look backwards from 2026 to today to find anything that somebody could do that would foul up their plans. What can you do to derail yourself? What could possibly come into, into, uh, uh, into play that could derail you? Well, you may be changing your job. Uh, you may be trying to develop some new defense against uh, penetration in your company. Uh, I don't know what that is, but you know, as you start to look at it, your subconscious mind does some interesting stuff. Most of the people I speak to said, you know, I've always been told not to be distracted, to stay right on what I'm working on and stay on that. Well, that works okay and it's a good idea. However, your subconscious mind starts to spit out ideas that we've been taught not to pay attention to. But now I'm going to just suggest, and you'll be surprised to notice how you begin to pay attention to these things. Where do they relate? And how do you make this into a system? So that's part of what we do now. The question is how quickly can you get this 2026 plan into your subconscious mind? Well, Renee and I know I've done it. I do it with clients all the time with hypnosis. Uh, I help them over the phone on Zoom calls to hypnotically take themselves out to 2026. And that implants it in your subconscious mind. But you might even just notice that as you start to think about 2026, what does it look like? Take some notes and take some notes for next week. Because what comes up, what comes to mind? Because that's what we're going to talk about next week. And we're going to be open to any questions that you guys have. If you want to send them into Renee ahead of time, we can talk about that. Uh, but that's what this whole concept is. It's using your subconscious mind, which acts day and night on your behalf as long as you don't get in its way. Dan, I think that's so important to talk about the subconscious mind component uh, because that is, I think, the foundation of everything that you do. Um, I can talk some more about it. One, one sec, Dan. We're okay. going to shout out some people. <laughs> We're here. So uh, Hi, Philip Phil. Wells is here. He said, I call me on the phone, Dan. Phil. <laughs> Dan, I'm going to put Dan's number up. Uh, Roger said, sorry, I'm late. No curtain today. No open curtains. Open curtains for the new year. Then we'll unleash the curtains. New year, new <laughs> curtains. It's too sunny behind me. Roger White says, hi, Renee and Dan. So, Dan, as you get started, as you talk, talk more about this, I wanted to just, you know, I want to share with folks that you and I have been doing, you know, I've been working with you for a very long time. Um, and some of the things that you've done, we started back, goodness, a decade ago. Um, and I remember, or even before that, because I remember yeah. looking into, I think it was, I think it was 2005. And I was, I was in 2010 at the time, something like that. <laughs> something, <laughs> And it seems so bizarre. It's like, what are you talking about? Um, and so just having that subconscious mind, having things that, you know, weren't even remotely something that I was thinking about, but when we did the, the exercises and these, you would say these things are flashing into your mind and all of these things that I wasn't even, it wasn't even on my radar. Um, and so many of them have, you know, manifested and they're here. Thank and you. so I think that by people not, it, it de definitely, you say this all the time, it defines conventional wisdom. It is not your standard, hey, write a list and think about goals and things like that. It really truly is this dream of what you think your life is going to be. Or you might, even, might not even think that. Because in my case, I didn't think, I, 
I didn't have children. I wasn't thinking children. I wasn't thinking anything like that. And it was showing that's what was coming up. Um, and so I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, this is nothing. You know, I had a health condition. I was didn't even think I could have kids easily. I was like, well, I don't know about this stuff. And all of us, you know, it all started to come through, come, come true. So um I just think it's just so, so powerful what you do and what you help people do. And it makes perfect sense to me that all of these, you know, your clients just continue to come back um, and that they would want to keep you a secret. I mean, I've had you for a secret for a while myself, <laughs> put you out here <laughs> to share you with the world. <laughs> well, we, you know, we've been, Ray and I have worked together for a long time and, uh, you know, in, in the environment she was in, in a corporate environment, uh, it wasn't something that she, you don't want to have to explain this to somebody. You want somebody who buys into it and says, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to see how it works out myself. And that's what we did. But in a corporate environment, I mean, we we would have phone calls and Renee would, Renee would go into the ladies' room and make sure nobody was there and we'd talk <laughs> to the ladies' room. You know, it, but the point is, is that, uh, it's giving somebody a tool that nobody else has and nobody uses and they don't use effectively. Uh, it plays into a lot with what we talk about with how much all of you on this call know that you don't know that you know. How much do you really know? You don't know how much you know. But what I've found routinely in working with people who are on very high levels in, in companies, a lot of these people either don't have a target they, they have short-term targets, which are important. But the fact is, is that the long-term objective is really what drags them toward it. Because, you know, once you set, once you set this in your subconscious mind, the, the, the uh, vision, the dream drags you toward it. And the idea is to find things that get in your way. So what distracts you? Many of us have been told, I can remember... Yeah, as, as a kid in school, and that was a long time ago, saying to people, you know, uh, say, say, pay attention. Don't daydream. Everybody was told, don't daydream. Well, this is dream. <laughs> this is daydreaming. You know, I we talk a lot about talking to yourself. And I have a very, very close friend. He wrote the forward to my two books. Uh, he, he said, he's a psychiatrist in the city, very prominent psychiatrist. And uh, we were at a party one time, and he said to me, what, what do you do? I said, I, I teach people how to talk to themselves. He says, I try to stop them from talking to themselves. <laughs> so, you know, it's very interesting. But what gets in people's way? Just listen to the comment. You know, I say to people, I would say to Renee, Renee, tell me what Renee hears Renee saying to Renee when Renee overhears Renee talking to Renee. Does your, does your internal conversation contaminate your performance or not? Sometimes it does. And the sad part is when it doesn't, you don't see it. You know, I, I have a, I was doing a project in, in Geneva for Hewlett Packard. And one of my clients was a guy who ran Ireland for Hewlett Packard. And along the way, he said to me, you know, I, I understand from some of your, your colleagues here that you work with golfers. I said, yes. He said, well, I'm a three handicap golfer. That's a very good golfer for people who don't play golf. He said, I'm in a club tournament with two scratch golfers. Those guys are really good. And he said, I'm afraid I'm going to get embarrassed and be embarrassed by this conversation, by this tournament that I'm in. I said, well, we were scheduled to speak every week for a year. So he said, uh, let, me, uh, let me think about it. So what tips do you have? I said, listen to the way you talk to yourself. He said, oh, that's BS. He said, I don't want to do that. So about a week later, we're talking, and he said to me, let me tell you what happened. He said, I was on the way to a multi-million dollar negotiation with people, and on the way, I heard myself saying to myself the same things that I was saying about going to this tournament. These guys are more experienced negotiators. They're going to get over on you. You're going to lose out. And he said, I realized how that contaminated my performance. It dragged me off. So we look for things that get in people's way and get them out of the way. Yep. Dan, another, somebody else. Good morning. Clarence chimed in here. Hi, Clarence. So, 
so Dan, as we, you know, because this is the end of the year, at the end of a <laughs> one of the nutsiest, nutsiest years in many of our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, what do you recommend people do to prepare to get ready for, since we're talking about 2026 right now, this is not 2021 in our heads, this is 2026. So what are we doing to get ready, to get ready for that? Uh, we don't even have to tell them what to do. You'll be surprised to notice how much you start to think about or dream about 2026 in relation to yourself and your family and your business and where you want to be. Uh, because the thing is, I believe, and I've said this to Renee, most of the cybersecurity people that I work with look like they're here, but they're not really here. They're already set way out in the future. They may not realize that's where they are, but that's where they are. So the question is, how quickly can you get yourself into a place where you're dreaming about the outcome that you want for yourself, for your company, for your family? And I suggest that rather than let all those things uh, coalesce into one thing, develop some silos. I have a silo system. Anybody who wants to send me a note, I'll send them a silo template, but you put different things in different silos. And that allows you not to be distracted. It allows you to go from one silo to the other, one topic to the other, without looking into this stew pot where you threw everything in and you see all the meat and, and carrots and potatoes floating around. Uh, it helps you to uh, deal with things individually. It's like a quarterback. Uh, you know, I worked with one of the top quarterbacks in, in the NFL. And, um, you know, he'd, he'd send out a play and he wouldn't look at each one. His subconscious mind picked up where he was going to throw it. Because the, the thing that I find is, is that uh, the difference for me between sports and business is that Sports happens faster. So you have to trust your subconscious, you trust your training, and not think about it. Just let your subconscious mind make the choice. And most times it's right on target. I find that with, with my hockey goaltenders. I worked with hockey goaltenders for 25 years and soccer goaltenders. And the point is, is that stuff happens way too fast for you to be able to think about it. So every action that you see a professional athlete take uh, is already in their subconscious mind and they need and they, they don't have time to think about it There's just no time to think about it and today Particularly in cybersecurity stuff happens very quickly as we just saw a couple of weeks ago The point is what gets in the way? How can you be more agile and you know and be able to pivot quickly? I'm sure there are a lot of people are looking at that right now So Dan when you say that um athletes, for example, don't have time to think. Is that because of the practice that they put in? Like they just know like the back of their hand, it's almost like driving in a sense. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't think I'm going to take this football and I'm going to throw it to this guy over here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to uh, I have to agree with Roger. He says the experience in Kung Fu often uh, the block of an attack just happens. I've been involved in martial arts and so have my kids for the last uh, 60 years. And so the point is, is that you're right. Your training has you blocked before it even happens. Right. But sometimes you'll you'll strike, you'll have a strike or a punch that gets in and you say to yourself, how did that ever happen? Well, that's because it was already in your subconscious mind. But right. the things we always stop on, and I work with people in business and academics, you have to trust your training. When you train and you put yourself into a position where you're training in these things, you need to trust the training you put in. Yeah. And Roger said he's experienced this with the same Kung, the same with Kung Fu. Often the block to an attack just, quote, happens. It so didn't just happen didn't just happen. What happened is, is that you visualize that attack over and over and over and over again. And your body responded to it like in seconds because you don't have time to think. Yeah. 
Steph says good morning. Morning, Steph. Hi, Steph. <laughs> you, you know, it, it. so that that's the whole point is how do you take advantage of this part of yourself that's often unused, often not recognized? And I'll give you an example. What I do, I have a, a, a business card. And the back of the business card, I don't have one with me. I'll hold it up next week. But the back of the business card says, every day in every way, I get better and better and better. And people use that card just before they go to bed. And the prescription is very simple. 10 times a night, 60 days straight, just before you go to sleep. Now, if you miss a day, that next day is the first of the next 60 days. But you say it before you go to sleep because the last thing you think about before you go to sleep is repeated over and over and over again by your subconscious mind. And so why not take advantage of the time you're sleeping to get better at whatever you want to get better at? And so it's how to put, how to put all that together. Totally, Van. I'll, I'll be, uh, I have one of those cards. I don't know what my kids did with that card. But I have to recreate, recreate it and put it back up there. You know, people will say to me, I have your card up on my computer. And I read it every day. I said, you know what you have to do with that? You have to take the card off the computer, turn it over, and call the guy on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes people will say, how, how do I know if it makes sense to work with you? You arrange a 15-minute free phone call with me, and I'll tell you in five minutes whether I can help you or not. And you'll know, too. Yeah. So it's where do you go with that? See, it, it, it comes back down to not what is a cost to do something. What is a cost not to do something? I bring this up with Renee all the time. Somebody's looking to develop a, a cybersecurity team. So what's what are their choices? What are they going to do? Are they going to go to the yellow pages, if anybody remembers what the yellow pages are? Uh, or did I call Renee on the phone? Because today, because of everything that's going on, slow is not working anymore for people. People want stuff to happen quickly. And they're more aware of where they can fall short, and they don't want that to happen. Right. See, people say, well, um, you know, it, it's coming up to the holidays now. I'm going to stop until the first of the year. Well, you don't stop. You slide backwards. Because I will tell you, for my clients, nobody is stopping. Yeah. Everybody is moving forward. Plus, with the advantage that they have now with Zoom calls and being able to contact people all over the world in a very quick, short period of time and market their services or their strategies, it, it's it's just a whole different world. And I don't think it's going back. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Dan. I, I think this is one of these times when we it will never be 2019 again. No. Mm -mm. Not happening. Clarence says, great advice. Roger says, need a chuckle emoji for things like the Yellow Pages comment. Well, I agree. How about me giving you another one? Renee and I have been talking about this. How about your Rolodex? You want to hold a picture of your Rolodex up somewhere? <laughs> Last week, Dan said Rolodex. I was like, Dan, there's a whole generation of people that have no idea what, <laughs> what that is. Well, but let me let me tell you where, where the competitive edge is being found. I have clients who are going back in and pulling a Rolodex out and going through it and seeing who they have contacts with, who doesn't know what they're doing right now, and, and they're putting together ways to contact those people that are very unique and very interesting. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's an interesting dynamic. People, people are using different things to attract clients. You know, some of you know I've talked that I work with, uh, with golfers. I guarantee golfers three to six strokes with their golf game without ever touching a club. Well, what good does that do, you know, for somebody who doesn't play? No good, except that the person who doesn't play can use it to – entertain their clients, develop new business, and have a reason to call somebody they haven't called in a long, long time. So a bank in, in Jersey a couple of years ago retained me to do a program for, for uh, Xerox in Virginia. With a strategy, we got 200 CEOs in two days to come into a hotel. 
Now mm -hmm. we did one three weeks ago. We got 115 people to come on Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, is there a different way to get people to talk to people about this stuff? Right. And for the person, I mean, you talked about silos and just, yes, was it yesterday? The day before yesterday, day after Christmas. So the 26th, I went to, uh, and, and you talked to me about silos, putting your, not looking at everything in a pot swimming around. Um, and so when I have been, have had challenges, especially with focus and kids and work and life and all these various things going on, you said, get a, you know, get a whiteboard or put it up on your wall and make sure you have silos. And so I bought this big white sticker, stick on kind of like post-it, big, huge thing to put on my wall and put the silos in there. So I want you to share with people when you say, you know, a lot about the soup and stuff, because I think what happens is, I don't know about everybody else, but it happens to me. You know, there's so many distractions, there's so much going on, um, especially being, you know, this year in particular with everything converging. So you have your family, you have your kids, you have like everything all at once and it's all together feeling like it's in that pot. So when you talk about silos, you know, share some of what you've, okay. you've told me or told people to do. Perfect. I, I have a, a template that people will fill out this silo template. I don't think I have one here that I could hold up. Uh, but the point is, is that you build these silos and you put them up on the wall and you start to put things in, in, the, uh, in the silos that make sense to you. Now, once they're up on the wall, uh, you don't ever have to read what you put in there again because your subconscious mind reads it as you go by. I've had a professional football player say to me, you know, I've got three businesses right now. What do you want me to do with these silos? Is it any idea that comes to your mind and that somebody presents to you put in a separate silo? He says, oh, he says, I'm just dealing with my three businesses now and I retired. And I said, wait a minute. He called me back. He said to me, I've got seven, between seven and 11 silos starting to fill up because all of a sudden you'll get an idea. So you take the idea and you put it on a post-it note and you stick the post-it note in whatever silo it applies to. And it helps you to go from one thing to another to keep it organized. So, yeah. but, but you know, I'll tell you when it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen when you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, Philip Well says, Renee, that's me. Phil, you could be my accountability buddy or something. <laughs> <laughs> have our silos up together. <laughs> Bill, send send me send me an email and I'll send you the silo template. Anybody yeah. wants to send me an e email, I'll send them a silo template. I think the silos is it is so helpful right now. I mean, one of your things is you always say, "What are we going to do? What what do you need to have happen right now?" Right. And I know I told you last week I had so many things swirling around, and I'm so I was like, you know, I'm getting distracted. Like, there's so much; it's almost like you're overwhelmed, and you just stop because there's so much going. And you directed me right back to that. Um, so, go ahead, Dan. It, no, it it work, It really works well. But the thing is, is that you know, it's how do you put that stuff together, and how do you how do you make use of it? You have to start by putting it up. Because it does help you. And then you mentioned distractions. Distractions are huge today. Uh, because when I when I talk to a professional football quarterback and I'd say to him, what do you need to have happen? He'd say, I need to increase my concentration. I said, okay, what gets in the way of your concentration? He said, I get distracted. I said, okay, what distracts you? He said, the way I talk to myself. And so what we had to do is we had to target where and when he talks to himself in a particular way. And then we had ways to control the way you talk to yourself. But it's noticing, see, you can't control what you can't see, hear, or feel. So if you can see the distraction, if you can feel a distraction, or, uh, and sometimes, or, you know, if you can hear the distraction, but sometimes distractions are invisible. I mean, I work with a guy who's a major uh, commercial 
real estate developer in the city with his golf game. And he said to me, you know, he said, I can't play well 50 yards in, but not all the time. So to make a very, very long story short, we discovered that the only time he can't play well is when he's playing against somebody who makes more money than he does. And this guy makes high seven figures. And so the point is, is that this was invisible to him and he didn't know it. So if something, if you're doing everything you've always done and what you're doing is not working for you, then you have, or it's not working the way it used to, then maybe it's something you want to take a look at and find out very, very quickly. I want to make it very clear that, that what I'm talking about here is not therapy. It's not once a week for the rest of your life. This is very quick stuff that sometimes is very interesting, but Renee and I have used it with some of the organizations she's worked with. But keep in mind that everything we're talking about here is going on for the people that you're talking to, the people you're trying to persuade and influence. So they're saying, what the hell do I do now? What do I do next? Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I said to some of you know, uh, Chris is one, one, Chris, who's one of the people I've been on a program with, with Renee. He sent an article out about cybersecurity and I read it and I'm saying to myself, I thought I didn't know what my kids were talking about who are currency traders and exotic option traders. But when I deal, read the kind of stuff that you people all deal with on a regular basis, I went, oh my God. But you know, there are people that you're talking to like me who are running companies who you need to persuade and influence and make comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. You know, it, it's how do you stay comfortable with being uncomfortable? And that's, and I, go ahead. No, I think that's happening a lot. I put up your email address so people have it. Uh, Internally, you know, a lot of our followers are employees and within companies and they're, you know, either becoming leaders or they're current leaders. And the whole, we, we have these discussions around communication and how to uh, connect with the business. How, you know, cybersecurity itself can't be in a silo, right? So it right. Can't, can't be by yourself. We're all talking as, as, um, James Azar says on Thursdays, we're in our echo chamber. So we're all preaching to each other, we're preaching to the choir, but the people you know, on our left and right don't know what's going on. So I think that component is so very important that you talked about where someone like you who's owning running companies and the other CEOs and C-suite executives and, and you know, SVPs and leaders and MDs and whoever who are not deep down into cybersecurity like us, um, you know, they see this and they don't know what to make of it. And so right. making them feel comfortable, making them feel, you know, hey, I'm explaining it so that anyone can understand it is so very important where those communication skills come in. Um, it's just, it's something that we've heard over and over again, especially from uh, the, the leaders. Um, a lot of the CIOs have been talking about it just in general, just that communication um within this industry and within our peers to be able to communicate what we're doing that can be very 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 technical and you know way down in the weeds and make it someone like you feel comfortable with you know whatever it is that we're, we're presenting i thought about this last night too you know um i i've talked about people who will put together a mistakes list what mistakes have your clients made before they became your client and what it cost them in money, emotion, and reputation. But you don't want to publish that because the people who are trying to uh, penetrate your company will use your mistakes list against you. So how do you market that effectively? How do you get people to, how do you educate the people who are wearing the white hats to get it against the people who are wearing the black hats? So you don't want to give a lot of this information. You don't want to give your defenses away and your secrets away. So what do you do? How do you, that would be an interesting conversation. How are you currently protecting your secrets when you come up with something new? Uh, Stu people, how do you do that? Right. Maybe that's something we need to look at in uh, 2021. I think so. That sounds like a really, really good topic. So Dan, I know we're at the 35 minute mark. I want to keep it short today since it is, um, you know, in between the holiday weeks. Yep. So I want to thank you again for being such a resource this year. 
you have been a huge, huge um, sage, I guess. (laughs) 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 For all of us, I know for me in particular, but I think I think collectively we can say that you have provided so much. um, I I feel like calm, you know, like just being here to share your expertise, to uh, talk to this community and to consistently be here, you know, for us pretty much every Monday um, since, I don't know, March, February, whenever this thing first started, the lockdown. So been here, you know, almost every single Monday giving us um, so much during uh, during this year, this year of 2020. So I just want to say thank you and that you've been so, so, so helpful for all of us. And I see some, I see some things coming in here. Roger says, thank you, Dr. Dan. (laughs) Bruce says, good luck fighting social engineering. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Uh, John said, I had a great listen. Thanks. So I know we'll be back next week and we're talking about actually now that we are in 2026, no typo, (laughs) we're in 2026. um, You know, what, what are we doing? Right. Right. So, you know, it's, it's you, everybody who's listening can come in with things that they want to talk about that they want to address. And also that they want to address in confidence because it's also a way to take something you're dealing with in confidence completely offline and talk to Renee about it or talk to me about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I say, it's a free 15 minute phone call uh, to find out, you know, can I help you or not? And Dan, you know, you have to, when it's confidential, call Dan, just call, <laughs> reach out to him directly. He is a very approachable, he, is looking for your calls. He's looking for your text messages. So please reach out to him. I'll put his number up there. Bruce says, thank you, Renee, for putting this together. I wish I could always a great podcast. Thank you so much, Bruce. Um, this has been, I, I, you know, we started this one on a whim, which is what I, I do a lot of stuff on a whim, right? See, <laughs> see if it works, see how it goes. And this has, I mean, I've gotten so much feedback, positive, positive feedback and to, you know, continue to have you back and continue to provide this, this advice. And, um, you know, sometimes, especially if we're in the middle of things and you say this all the time and I'm going to wrap because I know you have to run too. One is that you say all the time. Know, the thousand foot view, the 10,000 foot view, you know, being in 2026, like you're always above the current situation. You're always like, take a step back, take a, you know, like if you're in an airplane and you're looking down, how does that look in comparison to you being on the ground? Um, if you, you know, when you're in 2026, looking backwards. So all of these different tips, I think have been, um, and I mean, I know they've been helpful to me over the years. So well, Thank you. Hey, we'll keep it up. We will keep it up. We will keep it up. Clarence says, thank you for your wonderful advice. <laughs> Roger says, that was my subconscious. It's totally true. Uh, <laughs> and Bruce says, thanks for p- putting it together. Oh, he said that already. All right, Dan. So we will see you next week. Brand Great. new year. Same same time, same station. Same time. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. See y'all on Thursday.